What is going on everybody? Tyler Brandt back here with another video and we continue our Pats camp week looking at some of the bigger battles and the bigger question marks on the Patriots roster headed into the 2020 season and it's a very exciting week knowing that football is very close but on another note it's also very scary with the way that the world is with COVID-19 and the pandemic and the fact that it's already affecting the Patriots locker room it does suck and it's going to make the team worse. That's the first thing we're going to talk about today is the COVID pandemic and how it's already hit New England very hard. Like it's probably going to hit a lot of other NFL teams, but New England is getting the brunt of it today. I want to start out by saying about 20 minutes after yesterday's video I put out about the fullback battle between Jakob Johnson and Dan Vitale, about 20, 25 minutes after I posted that video, Vitaly opted out of the 2020 season, rendering that video at this point pretty much pointless. Jakob Johnson probably will end up being on the roster as a fullback, especially with the way that other guys are opting out in the locker room. So I do want to apologize, although it was more unlucky than anything. It was a little frustrating that the timing of that video was posted and then that news came out. I'm not at all mad at Vitaly for that decision. Uh, I think everybody has that right, and I don't think that they're any less of a man or a football player by opting out. But unfortunately, I posted that video at around 5.30, and by like 5.45, he had opted out. However, the opt-outs would not stop there. A little bit later on, the guard, the practice squad guard, Najee Torin, he would opt out of the 2020 season. A little bit later on in the evening, Marcus Cannon, the first really big loss for New England, Marcus Cannon would opt out of the 2020 season. Now, again, it doesn't take away anything of these people as, or, or these guys as men, as, as their character. It, it's unfortunately the way the world is right now and and they're putting themselves in their health first especially for a guy like Marcus Cannon who's had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma so he is a definitely high risk player and you can't really get mad at a guy like that for skipping the season and you can't change how you look at him unfortunately it's just the world we live in right now and of course it didn't stop there earlier this morning and in the last few hours Patrick Trung has said he's not going to play. He's opting out of 2020. Donta Hightower has opted out of 2020. And Brandon Bolden has opted out of the 2020 NFL season. So, again, three more just monumental losses to the New England Patriots. These are guys that are on the field a lot. Brandon Bolden is an A-plus special teamer. Donta Hightower, not having him, you're losing a play caller on the defense and you're losing pretty much your entire starting linebacking core from 2019 is now gone. I mean, Juwan Bentley is there, and we've talked about him playing a big role in 2020. Um, but without, excuse me, without Donta Hightower, the, the entire starting group is gone from 2019. That's a monumental loss. And uh, again, Bolden is a great special teamer. And Patrick Chung is another, not maybe the most physically imposing player on the defense, but one of the just smarter guys that... Make sure guys are in the right spot to make a play. These are leaders on the Patriots defense that aren't going to play in 2020. This, however, does not change my opinion of them. It doesn't change who they are as men, who they are as people. Donta Hightower has a two-week-old son at home. And from what I've read, that his mother is a type 2 diabetic. So he's got people in his life that are high risk. And he's got an infant child at home. That doesn't change anything about him. Patrick Chung, Brandon Bolden, the, the same goes for them. I keep referencing this because I saw something on Twitter that I'll leave right over in the side over here. I saw something on Twitter kind of referencing the fact that maybe because Brady's not in New England anymore, that all of a sudden like it's okay for these guys to take time off, which is maybe, if that is even true, that is just ridiculous to put out there. These men are caring for their family, caring for themselves first. I mean, two of the men on this list we know have an infant child and high-risk people in their life. So for you to even kind of make some sort of an idea that because Brady's not there and because a lot of the leadership, Skarnecchia left and retired, stuff like that, that they wouldn't want to play, I just don't think that that's the right space to put all that out there right now. It just... It's not the right space for it. That, I think, is a completely different conversation. These guys just wanted to miss the season because look what's happening in baseball. I mean, it is spreading like wildfire. The NFL certainly is putting things in place slowly, but they're behind the eight ball to act. 
So, I mean, if these guys don't want to play, they don't want to play. And now New England goes into the season, and they're just going to have to change a couple things. And, and that's, again, the way the world is in 2020. The last thing I'm going to mention in terms of COVID and guys opting out before we get into what today's video is really about is the fact that without these players playing in the 2020 season, the Patriots cap space will go up significantly. I believe that they'll probably be north of 15 to 20 million without these guys playing in 2020. I don't know everything in concrete about how the cap works, but I'm pretty sure if they're not playing in 2020, that cap just moves back a year to 2021. Um, so New England will have money to get and acquire some guys to come in and, and get to work if that's what they want to do. I, I think they'll be a little bit hesitant at first. I, I think they're going to want to see who else opts out. It looks like these guys are starting to feel more comfortable with other players doing it. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it makes them any less of a man, of a player, of a, of a person. So I think the more guys do it, the more other players will get comfortable with it. So I, I think New England will wait a little bit. I don't necessarily think they're going to run out and get a guy like Jadevian Clowney. I don't think they're going to run out and get a guy like David Njoku. I don't think this means, oh, we have all this money. Let's go spend it right now. I think they're going to slow down, see how the next couple weeks play out, see if there's any standouts, wait to see what the world looks like in a couple weeks, and then go from there. Okay, so with all that out of the way, the new side of this and new stories may come out, new guys may opt out before you see this video, but in terms of right now, that's kind of the, the latest with Patriot News in terms of breaking stuff. So now let's get into the point of today's video, which is to break down the Patriots kicking game and what it should be like or what it could be like in 2020. So I know on the thumbnail, Jake Bailey's there, but that's purely for decoration purposes. He is not uh, we know how good he is. He's going to be the guy in 2020. This is about Justin Rorwasser, the kicker, the fifth round pick from Marshall. And before we get into him, I wanted to break down where we've been as a team. The Patriots have been as a team in the kicking game to where the bar would be for a new kicker coming in, especially one that was drafted by New England. So if you've been a Patriot fan for as, as long as you have been, you know that the Patriots have essentially had two kickers in the last 20, 25 years, and that's Adam Vinatieri and then Steven Gostowski. So it never has really been an issue for New England. Adam Vinatieri in his entire career outside of an outlier year in 2003 has never had a season with a lower field goal percentage than 77% which is you're in good shape if you're in New England or if you're any team and the lowest that your kicker has ever kicked in over in almost a decade, if, in about a decade of being with a team is 77%, you're in pretty good shape. So he leaves, goes to Indy and the Patriots draft Stefan Gostowski and he comes in, picks up the bar and runs with it. He's never had a kicking percentage at any point in his New England career lower than 76.9. So 77% is virtually the number for the last 25 years They've never really had bad kicking. They've missed a couple kicks here and there, but, I mean, we've seen teams like the Chargers go through just abysmal stretches. Teams, you know, uh, it, it, so you have to be thankful for New England to be able to have this part of the team locked down for pretty much two decades. So, Gustavski goes down in 2019. He's on IR with the hip injury, and all of a sudden, the kicking woes that everybody else seems to have all the time now were felt by New England. They rotate through three kickers. It's basically Nick Folk's job for a majority of the season, but they had Nick Folk, they had Mike Nugent, and they had Kai Forbath for one game. I believe it was that Houston game. So all three kickers combined to kick 26 field goals last season. That they It seemed almost like the New England was waning away from them because there wasn't the guarantee or the high level of confidence that has been with the two kickers that were kicking before this mess of 2019. Now, are they crazy for that? Absolutely not. Because when you add the percentage of field goals made between Nugent and Nick Folk, who that's who we're counting, who kicked 25 of the 26 field goals, we're going to take four bath out because he kicked and made one in the Houston game, I believe. So when you add up the, the field goals made by Folk and Nugent, they they sit at 72.45%. That was the percentage between the two of them of made field goals in 2019. And even looking up some of the stats, the NFL has had a down year in 2019 for kicking. It was kind of like an all-time low or an outlier year 
of low for kicking, and 72% is way below that line of even an outlier year, where later in the year that, as the NFL as a whole, was hitting about, I think it was 78 or 79% of field goals, which is low for them, and New England was sitting at 72. So clearly there was a reason why New England wasn't too confident in these kickers, and it it really showed in the stats and the numbers too. So into the 2020 draft we go, and in the fifth round, the Patriots take Justin Rohrwasser, the kicker from Marshall. Very interesting that they drafted him. Vinatieri was an undrafted free agent. Gostowski was a fourth-round pick. So uh, if they hit here, he could be in New England for the next decade without even thinking about it. That's one of the more promising things is at least New England has seemed to be able to do that before. There's not much scouting you can do on a kicker. Uh, I watched a couple videos of him in, in practices. He I, I was watching him hit from 61. He hit a 64. He hit long 50s. He hit a walk-off kick in 2019 versus, in West, versus Western Kentucky. Um, and in Marshall, over the two years he kicked, he was an 85% kicker, which is good. Uh, if he can bring that to the NFL, that's fantastic. But it's hard to really scout a kicker, even looking at film of him doing this, it's hard to see what he's going to do in-game. I mean, you look at a guy like Robert, uh, Robert Aguayo, the kid that was drafted by Tampa Bay in the second round, he was one of the best college kickers of all time, and it, unfortunately, it just didn't translate. So it's hard to really get a read on what a kicker's going to do, but it, for the first time in almost two decades, there's a giant question mark at the kicker position in New England. So I thought that was worth talking about at least in a video. And lastly, considering the schedule that New England's playing this year and considering the rate that guys are opting out currently in New England, it seems like they're going to play a ton, a ton of close games where you can't leave points on the field and you're going to have to get points a lot of the time. It's not going to be an easy season because of the pandemic. And then when you're playing the schedule that you're playing, regardless of a pandemic, New England is certainly going to have their hands full. So leaving points on the field is going to hurt them immensely when we don't know there's so many other question marks all over the field. So that's going to do it for this video, the Tuesday video of Patriots Camp Week. What do you think of Justin Rohrwasser? Do you think they should bring in a couple other guys to, to light a fire under him and make sure, you know, he's all there? What do you think about the Patriots kicking game? Do you think that it'll be a necessity in a very tough 2020 schedule? Get at me in the comments below. Let me know. We hit the 50 subscriber milestone this week, which is just crazy. Thank you, everyone that has subscribed. Keep sharing. Keep telling a Patriots fan. Keep telling a football fan. Drop a like. Drop a comment. I appreciate everything that everybody's done so far. We're just getting started, and hopefully there won't be a pandemic for the rest of the life of this channel and the rest of my life here on YouTube. But until next time, I'm Tyler Brandt. Be good, be safe, and I'll catch you on the next video.